Hello guys, uh, Satyajit Patnaik here and welcome back to my channel. You're watching the deep learning playlist and today's topic is about sigmoid function. Now in the previous classes, we talked about step function and linear function. I have been talking about sigmoid function a lot. Sigmoid function is very used in, in deep learning. We shall be talking about that in details today. So let's get started. <laughs> So sigmoid function is basically non-linear in nature. Okay. One of the mostly used activation functions, we'll talk about that in depth. So this is how a sigmoid function looks like. If I draw this. Okay. So let's say this is 0.5. And this is how it looks like it is one in y axis. Okay, so the range of a sigmoid function is always between zero to one. Okay, and the formula of sigmoid function is one a equals to one by one plus e to the power of minus x. So it looks you can see that in this area, you can see that in this area the gradient is high. If I just calculate the gradient, delta y is greater than delta x. Yellow is not looking good. Delta y is greater than delta x. That means my gradient is high in this area. What about this area? The gradient is low. Okay. We'll talk about that. So the first characteristics of a sigmoid function is that it is nonlinear in nature, which means the combination of a nonlinear function is always nonlinear in nature, right? So notice that in these areas, as you can see, the learning is less, the gradient is less. That means the neurons are not getting activated or you can say the neurons are going into a passive state. Okay. Or you can also call it in simpler terms that uh, a small change in the value of X in that region uh, is not causing a change in y value. Okay. And in this area, in the red box area, this area, a small change in x is changing drastically the y value. Okay. Or else you can call it as the, the gradient is high in those areas, right? So it is also called as a good classifier considering its properties. The advantage is that, as I told you, unlike linear functions, this function is nonlinear in nature. So combinations of these functions is always a nonlinear function, which is which is always good. And the range is always between zero to one as compared to minus infinity and infinity. Because in linear function, if I draw a line like this, X values varies from infinity till minus infinity, right? So here, the range is always between one to zero, zero to one. Okay, so sigmoid function is one of the functions which is mostly used in deep learning. It has its own drawbacks as well. We'll not talk about the drawbacks right now. We have the drawbacks covered after few classes when we talk about the exploding gradient and vanishing gradient problems, but let's continue for the time being. So as you can see the corner areas, the green boxes, these areas are basically like the end areas towards either ends, y values tend to respond very less changes to x, which means the gradient is very small, which means network refuses to learn further. Or you can otherwise call it as the neurons are going into a passive state. They're not activating or else they are lowering, the activations are lowering. Okay, so that's it about sigmoid function we will cover uh, the derivatives of sigmoid function and all those things in the future classes. I think that's it for today's video. Uh, and in the next class, we'll talk about the Tanis function. So stay connected. Thank you for watching guys. If you have any doubts, feel free to comment out in the description below. Subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed and like and share among your friends. Thank you.